In my previous video, I showed how to use the new hair system in combination with geometry nodes to create a scattering system for scattering and modifying objects with precision. And for the thumbnail, I scattered these crystals. Since then, I've gotten several requests for a tutorial on how to create those crystals. So in this video, I will show how to make a procedural geometry nodes crystal setup, as well as how to make these two materials to go with it. The actual mesh we use for this setup doesn't matter. So select the default cube, then head over to the Geometry Nodes workspace and add a new node tree. For the base shape of the crystal, we will use a cylinder from the mesh primitives. The amount you use in the vertices field will affect the final look of the crystals, so feel free to experiment. But in my case, I will set the amount of vertices to 5. Next, we will turn the flat top and bottom to points to more closely resemble a crystal. To do this, add an extrude mesh node, a scale elements node, and a boolean math node set to not. Connect the side output of the cylinder to the boolean math node. Connect the boolean output to the selection input of the extrude mesh node. Then disable the individual checkbox. By using the NOT node for the selection input, we can essentially tell the extrude mesh node to extrude any faces which are not included in the selection, the sides of the cylinder in this case. Connect the top output of the extrude mesh node to the selection input of the scale elements node. Then set the scale to zero. Now we have the basic shape. However, this leaves us with five vertices on both the top and bottom points instead of one. So to fix that, we need to add a merge by distance node. To make the shape even more crystal-like, we will use two dual mesh nodes and one triangulate node. The dual mesh node converts vertices to faces and faces to vertices. So by adding this three node combination, we end up with something that is starting to look like a crystal. Next, we will add some randomness to make it look more natural. Add a subdivide mesh node set to 2, a set position node, a noise texture, a map range node set to vector, and a vector math node set to scale. The values of the noise texture can be adjusted to fit your own look, and is dependent on the size of the mesh, but these are the values that I will use. Connect the color output to the vector input of the map range node, then change the two min values to negative 1. Connect the map range node to the scale node, Set the scale to 0.4, then connect it to the offset input of the set position node. The scale value determines how much the noise texture should distort the mesh, so you can adjust it to your liking. However, I found that the value between 0.2 and 0.4 works well. Also, the reason for using the map range node is that the noise texture outputs values between 0 and 1, so using the unmodified output means that the displacement would only be in the positive x, y, and z direction. So by remapping the 0 to 1 range to a range of negative 1 and 1, we get an even displacement in all directions. The last two nodes we need are a set material node and a set shade smooth node. Of course, we need a material to use with the set material node. So in the materials tab, add a new material and name it crystal. Then in the set material node, Select the crystal material in the dropdown. Before moving on to shading, let's make the node setup more flexible by adding some controls for the shape in the modifiers tab. First, connect the depth input and the radius input to the group input. That way we can control the dimensions of the crystal out in the modifier. Also, connect the offset scale input from the extrude mesh node to the group input as well.
The last control I want to add is a way to modify the noise. So change the noise texture from 3D to 4D. Then connect the W input to the group input. With these controls available in the modifier, we can easily modify the parameters to create a crystal with a shape that we like. It also means that we can just duplicate the crystal, change the values, and generate a different crystal. Very handy. I would also suggest adding a bevel modifier with two or three segments, and a low amount value to smoothen out the edges a bit. Alright, let's set up the crystal material we created. Unfortunately, the material doesn't work well in Eevee, so I will use Cycles as the render engine for this. The material itself is pretty simple, and there are two ways to go about it depending on what you need. For example, in this animation, I used the mission to make the crystals more visible, but in a setting with more light, you might want something more realistic. So let me show you both setups, starting with the emissive one. First, set the roughness and transmission roughness to something like 0.25, and set the transmission to 1. Add a Fresnel node, a color ramp, and a math node set to multiply. The Fresnel node gives you a grayscale gradient based on your view angle and the actual geometry of the mesh which we can then use to control whatever values we want in a principled BSDF. So set the IOR value of the Fresnel node to 2, then connect it to the color ramp. Connect the color ramp to the multiply node, and finally, connect that node to the emission strength input of the principled BSDF. At this point, we can set the colors that we want for the crystals, and in my case, I will use a bright muted pink as the base color, and a bright blue as the emission color. I can then adjust the distribution of the two colors with the color ramp to get a look that I like. And to tone down the emission, I can decrease the value in the multiply node. This setup works great in scenes with low luminosity, since it's self-illuminating. The non-emissive version is set up in a similar way, but instead of using the Fresnel node to control emission in the principal BSDF shader, we use it to control a mix RGB node connected to the color input of a glass shader, with a roughness of around 0.4. And that's basically it. I hope you found this video helpful, and that you learned something new. See you next time.